tell us all about it. I'm joined live now by Dr. Naomi Habib. Naomi, thank you so much for joining me. Now, can you explain to us just how your tests work and how you created the method? So uh, pretty on uh, pretty early on, we realized we have two really critical issues we have to try and help solve. One was the reagents for the tests that are keep running out, and the other one is the scale of the tests. That so we need instead of like the number of tests being done today, we need to scale it up to tens of thousands of tests. So our my background, I'm actually a, a neuroscientist, but my background is in uh, uh, developing methods in order to uh, sequence small molecules called RNA in the brain. And we realized that actually, in order to diagnose the virus, we need to apply very similar methods that what we're doing in the lab to study uh, the brain, we can actually do, use these methods to also diagnose the virus. So that's what exactly what we're doing. We uh, came up with an idea of using small magnetic beads uh, that can very easily extract these, small, these RNA, viral RNA molecules from the clinical samples and help us identify if an uh, individual is sick or healthy. And Dr. Habib, your method has been crowned as being far more efficient and cost effective. Well, Talk to me <laughs> about the benefits of using your method. Uh, yeah, very much so. So our method has several really appealing uh, advantages. The first is that the, um, uh, it is much, much uh, faster than current methods that are being uh, traditionally used in uh, diagnostic labs. The second is that we, the materials we use are, instead of buying uh, very expensive commercial kits, are materials we can actually generate in every lab, uh, like exactly like our lab. And uh, the, the third part is that um, we can um, a very easily do it in very large scale. So that's why we've been working very, very closely uh, with a local hospital here, Hadassah Hospital. And this is actually one of the strengths of what we have here. So when I say we, by the way, it means my lab in a very tight collaboration with the lab of Professor Nir Friedman from the Hebrew University. And we are already joining a huge, huge effort of the Hebrew University that already works with Hadassah Hospital. So the Hebrew University has already built a whole system uh, to help with a diagnostic test from Adassa. So there's over 50 volunteers working day and night at the hospital in collaboration with Professor Dana Wolf from the virology department. Uh, it's all led by Professor Yuval Dor and many others who are doing like an amazing work. So we could actually come with our method. Once we developed it, we, can't, we could come directly to them and immediately test them. And we've done already more than 800 uh, tests by now. So our, te our method is completely validated, so we're first integrating it into Hadassah. We're now also talking with uh, people in Israel and in many other countries around the world, and hopefully other people could benefit from this method and it will be really widely used and can uh, solve the problem of the missing reagents throughout the world. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to get a grip on this virus as quickly as possible. But I can imagine that there's certainly a lot of red tape that you must need to be able to go through in order to roll this out. Talk to me about the parameters that must be put in place or adapted by government bodies in order to make this possible and use the technology mm -hmm. you've created. So that's a great question. Um, we really so what we developed right now actually has two steps the first is we completely integrated our method into the streamline of testing that's already being done uh, throughout Israel. So what we are actually doing is we're replacing one step within this process uh, by our method. And this step is the step that actually takes longest and is the part where we were missing the, the reagents the most. So it was a bottleneck. 
So we're kind of, by integrating our tests in the pipeline, it could very easily be adopted. It doesn't need a dramatic change in policy or a dramatic change in the way people are gathering samples right now. That was really important for us. So it means, but it just means it's being done faster. It means that once the sample gets to the clinic, instead of taking several hours, it could take significantly uh, shorten this time, meaning that we could do four to ten times more samples a day within the same pipeline that's already being done today. But to be honest, this is not enough, and we really think we need to scale up the tests significantly more. And that's why we're still working day and, light and night in the lab to develop the next set of testing. So there is a huge crew, even just with us within our labs, there are over 15 people working really around the clock in order to make this happen. And the idea is to use more advanced and innovative techniques that are based on gene, uh, DNA sequencing technologies that could enable us to do 15,000 samples at once. So this, the idea is that we could do 100,000 people a day, or at least several uh, thousand, uh, tens of thousands of people a day, uh, and this could really enable us to go back to our routine, to go back to our lives and do this massive, massive testing. Um, so that will require a lot of work from the government to help us do that. It will require more efficient gathering of samples. And I really hope there'll be collaboration on that because I think it's critical uh, for us to get out of, the, of this crisis. So that's basically it. We, kinda, we promise to work really hard on the development. We're almost there. We have very, very promising results and we need the government co collaboration to actually make it happen. Well, I don't think anybody disagrees with you there, Dr. Naomi Habib, that we need to all work together to flatten this curve as quick as possible. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been great talking with you.